Hey, welcome back. Uh, today we have a small drill press quill completely assembled here at the healing bench um, that needs the taper to be reground. It has a, a relatively large taper. I'm not sure where this belongs originally, but the owner of the quill wants it to have a B16 taper, which is like a Jacobs taper in the US just uh, it's another style of taper. Uh, the B tapers are basically a short version of a Morse taper. It's a cut off Morse taper. And we will regrind the end of this, this quill to a B6 and taper to match this drill chuck. And I figured the easiest way is to do this on the tool and cutter grinder with the quill set up on the table in two V blocks. Uh, magnetic weed blocks but for for good measure safety I added uh, a strap clamp up here that holds it securely in place um, with a key here in the key slot so I do not damage the other diameter of the quill um, we're going to adjust it to half the taper angle and we're driving the the spindle here uh, via an o-ring large o-ring uh, and two pulleys off the motor driven workhead here. Motor driven workhead with three char chuck and and this is just a pulley with a dial pin as a as a shank. I made this some time ago when I reground a, a life center for a lathe so I could drive the life center with a drill motor. And I have a pulley clamped on here on the on the out uh, output shaft or input shaft of the quill um, with a little bit of run out. This is the pulley I used for the life center and the bore does match almost. It's not critical because the o-ring drive doesn't give any uh, major side loads on the quill and we will not have a problem there. It runs very nicely. Uh, next step will be to adjust the taper angle and figure out the dimensions of the taper. I'm going to use this um, uh, scissor type uh, sign bar. I made this years ago, years and years ago before I had a, a surface grinder. This is completely machined out of pre-hardened uh, tool steel. All pretty much all done on the shaper. And as you can see it's, it's not ground, it's uh, it's a shaper finish wood, but still, it's quite, it's very decent. It's relatively precise for what it is. And we're going to align it with the base against the quill here. And we will hold it in place with two precision ground magnets like this. And the second one over here. Make sure it's contacting the quill nice and tight. Now we put a gauge block stack in here that indicates our half half taper angle and we indicate it in by uh, loosening the strap clamp and tapping the whole setup around until we get a zero to zero reading on this um, sign bar. Okay, we get the reference book out and as I said a B16 taper is just the end of a Morse taper too. As you can see, I have the B16 drill chuck here and my Morse Taper 2 wool hopter. And <laughs> um, that's the, that's the double-ended uh, drill chuck wool hopter. So you can adapt it to, an, to a straight output shaft of a milling machine. Uh, very useful, slightly lacking rigidity. So we we'll look in the, uh, in the reference book here. Uh, more steeper two. We need more steeper two down here, and back here we have half the taper angle, which is 1.431 degrees. Uh, the funny thing about more steeper is they all each size has a different angle. Keep that in mind. Um, and we want the outer end here, D3. D3 is 14.5 millimeters. That's our narrow end of the taper, 14.5. Uh, 
Basically, that's all we need to grind this taper. Uh, the overall length is determined by the drill chuck. Uh, I just measured down into the drill chuck uh, how much taper they ground in there uh, over a length. And we'll just grind the taper on the spindle a little bit longer, 23 millimeters in this case. Um, 1.431 degrees, that's what we set with the sidebar. Sinus 1.431 multiplied by 65. 65 is the distance of the rollers on my sign bar. Gives us 1.62 millimeters. My sign bar is designed in a way that you have to add one millimeter to get to get zero. So plus one, 2.62. Three something something something. Uh, so we will build a, a gauge block stack of two point six two. Do an idiot check, two point six two. And if we put that in our sign bar, we will have our angle. I loosened the bolt up here, the nut, so I can tilt the whole setup. And I already checked that I need to go. A little bit out this end. Okay, that's almost zero zero end to end. Let's clamp it very. Hope it doesn't don't shift it. Okay, that's over a distance of about 60 millimeters. And we get 0.0. It's, it's pretty much zero end to end. Makes a little bit of bow in the middle. Keep in mind this is a 2 micron indicator. Um, should be alright for such a short taper. Keep in mind the taper we're grinding is just uh, 20, 20 something, 23 millimeters long. And we're indicating over a length of 60. So we will almost a third the error, at least half the, ang uh, the error. Okay, get the indicator out of the way. Get our sign bar out of the way. I'm marking off the length to where to grind. The, the actual overall length is not critical at all. Just needs to be the right diameter here and the right uh, taper. There is the wheel again if you want to know more. It's a 46 grit Hardness I uh, aluminum oxide wheel. Uh, I have these made especially for my grinders because Usually you cannot get surface grinder wheels that small. Got them from HB uh, Schleifmittel, <laughs> HB Schleifmittel GmbH here in Germany. Um, very reasonable price. I think I paid something like 14 euros a piece.
I roughed down all all the material uh, by plunging in next uh, one full wheel width. So um, I do not wear one side of the wheel completely down and have to redress a whole lot of it. Uh, the end out here is about 14.6, 14.59. Which is very close to the diameter we want. Taper is ground and we check with our chuck here. This chuck was supplied, um, that's not mine. Uh, looks pretty good. Uh, I, I just pushed it on and it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it has to be a good fit. I, I set the quill to the correct angle using relatively precise equipment, so I do not have to tweak the angle probably. So I will change to a finer wheel. A 46 grit wheel leaves not, not what I want for a machine taper. So we'll set up a finer wheel, probably an 80 grit, and just dust it off very lightly, and it's done. Okay, uh, I finished ground the taper with a 60 grit Norton wheel, relatively hard wheel. Uh, not ideal, but it, it worked. It worked quite decent. Uh, finish is okay. Uh, Runout is not brilliant. <laughs> This is a 2 micron indicator and I get about, oops, I get about one division of uh, out of roundness and run out error. Uh, that's 2 microns. Uh, considering that we're not running spindle bearings in this quill, probably, um, that's, that's, that's okay. And it's a drill press, not a, not a precision grinder, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. 2 micron for such a for, for a drill press uh, taper is in my mind okay okay-ish. While I'm very confident in my taper setting here with the sign bar, I still want to double check just in case something happened uh, by blowing up the taper and checking with the drill chuck that I got supplied to. For, for testing. Uh, I like the, the Dicam high spot glue for, for tapers because it, it gives, even with a very thin layer of paint, it gives, gives a very good print, a very good readable print. I, 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 I wear gloves with the Dicam. If you look in the material, material, da material safety data sheet for, for the Dicam, there are some things in it that you don't want on your skin. And for checking a taper I just take the mating part, I, I get it on the taper and I give it a very light maybe five degrees of rotation. And then I pull the chuck off and take a look at the print on the inside. If you try to blow up the inside of the of the chuck and get a print on the taper. That's very hard to do um, because you cannot get a very good coverage of, of paint, a very even coverage of paint on the inside of the taper here. Um, I just I, I put a little bit of, of Dicam on a, on a Kim wipe and I just rub the taper down with it while it's spinning so I get a very even coating. And when we take a close look at the chuck, we get a very good, very faint blue color all the way around in taper. And that gives me the indication that our taper angle of, the, of this and this are spot on. I have a nice lead out radius here to the, to the old diameter of the shaft, which is very good because I get not, no stress rise there, so the taper will not break as easy as if there was a very sharp corner or even an undercut. 
and yeah, we're good to go. That's another one, another one done. Uh, we're done regrinding the taper. I ran a flexible Kratex stick over it just to <laughs> give a nice shine and doesn't change the geometry at all. Uh, removed also the hairline uh, burr here on the edge. And I ro rolled over the edge here in front with a stone. Just had it running and used stone to roll it over so there is no sharp edge. Uh, yeah, let's have this set up down, pack it up, send it back. Hope you enjoyed this uh, short one. Thank you all for watching. See you next time.